and nobody ever knew my name. I came from nothing and had nothing anybody needed. Doesn't matter where you're coming from or going to. Yes, I wanna yes, tell you yes, what yes. My name is Isia Kadiola. I'm an SAP consultant. My name is Alain Car David Inegbede, aka Bedo. Professionally, I work with Protangamo Nigeria Limited. I'm what you call a business operations planning and market initiative leader. My name is Kyle Day, but my name in the club is AD. My name is Ogunkeye Olushe Ayowole. A.K. Chariot. I'm an information security expert with InterSwitch Limited. Today, we're rolling to your lorry, Quara State, with the Eagle. You know, the baddest motorcycle group in the world. My name is Tunde Abidero. I'm a businessman. My name is uh, Mark Akdogan. Uh, professionally, I am an IT analyst. My name is Benga Debola. I am an educationist by profession. My name is uh, Momodu Isa. I've been riding for seven years. My name is Okagbari Shilosi Jesu. Uh, my name is Ali. Uh, I'm into uh, filmmaking, uh, general visual production. My name is Ike Namaikyo Anazudo. I'm a caterer and I'm a direct sales agent. My name is Okoyemi Fodeke, but they all call me Fodex. And I'm an architect by profession. Tony Adebola is what I was christened when I was born. Um, generally known to my friends as Mr. T. I provide logistic support in the petroleum industry, both upstream, downstream. Um, been riding for a little while, maybe like 30 years. We're going to an orphanage. I mean, the Eagles are just wonderful people to roll with, right? So we decided that instead of doing road trips, we do community service. And we chose Quara. Quara is slightly communal. Uh, I can tell you, you'll see why I say so when we get on the road. But uh, it's going to be a very, very hectic trip, but full of fun. We're going to see the, uh, an orphanage called the Quara Children's Home. Um, so as we leave now, we're heading straight to Ibadan. Ibadan is roughly, normally two hours, but we're on bike, so we're hoping we can cut it short. We'll be doing stopovers to swear, say hi to guys, pump up our hands and, you know, hit knuckles from Ibadan. We'll hit um, Oyo State. From Oyo State, we'll get to Oboma Shore, Oboma Shore, then A.M. Curry, then Ilori. So basically, this is what it is. It's community service on bikes, mad, 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 mad bike, but then it's going to be fun. Really, really fun. So, you stay with us and let's go together. All right. We're quite more than this. The EMC is quite, I think we're almost 30. And almost 30 people assembled at Mobile. Some people just came to see us all. And it was so colorful. I mean, everybody was happy, smiling, you know, pumping hands and bumping knuckles. It was really fine. Everybody in EMC feels like family members to me, feel like brother and sister, and it's just been an awesome experience hanging out with them. Basically, almost everybody in the group before now, almost everybody, was a solo rider, so to speak, you know, it's not like we don't ride with other groups, but we've been basically individual riders, you know, ride to work, ride for fun, weekends and stuff like that. But I was saying to myself, yeah, I mean, there's quite a number of bike, bike, you know, motorcycle groups in Lagos. There's quite a number of motorcycle groups in Nigeria. But why don't you bring people together who do something unique and different to them? You know, so we, I just started hooking up with guys that I meet in the course of riding and stuff like that. I'm like, hey, do you want to ride together on Sunday? Do you want to ride together on such and such a day? And then before you knew what was happening, Four of us were riding together, five of us were riding together, and we're like, okay, hey, let's, let's start a forum on, on Blackberry, you know. So we started a forum on Blackberry called Eagle Riders, and we're like, hey, why don't we form a club? <laughs> you know, it was just one from one thing to another. And everybody was like, wow, that would be a beautiful idea. It feels like I've known these guys, like, all of my life. I just saw that most of the people that I ride with are responsible professionals who 
we just wanted to have a nice time on the motorbikes and you know here we are today we don't discriminate you know we're not saying is your bike brand new are you riding that kind of bike what kind of bike we don't do that you know we're taking over because we own this place haters you better not show your face all them bad people gonna be this grace god has given me grace back up straight and chain up i'm not afraid to testify don't get in my way my heart is blazing my god is so amazing we're gonna shake it up because it's how we do it you know you can't refuse it Motherless baby was a very humbling experience for me. It makes you appreciate what you have. You know, you complain about your own life when you get home. Not enough money, I want to buy this. Uh, my father is this, my mother is that. Then you come and see kids that don't have anything. That all they want is just somebody to call their own. And you kind of just realize that life is too short and is, there's no time wasting complaining of things like that. The striking thing for me was when the orphanage manager said something like, I think he used the term called non-adoptable. They said they have non-adoptable kids that will basically be there all their lives, till they die. I mean, for me, that was like almost like a breaking point yesterday because there are kids who have, for no reason, for no, it's not their fault. They have sicknesses that they can't control, epilepsy, cerebral palsy, um, you name it. And what the man said was that they would leave and probably die in that home because nobody's going to want them. And you start to realize what privilege you have as a human being. When you're all good, I mean, you have a family that loves you, you love your family back, you have a great job, awesome people, you ride a lovely bike. It's a real contrast to what you see at the orphanages. And that, that's why it's critical that we learn to do these kind of things once in a while to make life just a little bit more meaningful. I began to appreciate God for keeping me alive for my kids because I know what it means if I'm not there. And um, also, it makes me look at life in a different way, particularly when I held that three weeks old baby in my hand, who I was told was abandoned from day one. It tells me how wicked this world is, and it makes me want to feel, okay, what can I do? I have friends, I have uh, mentors who've been at it for many years, trying to, trying to, um, to have a child, conceive and all. And it never seems to work. Then you, see, you go there, you see children, like there's a baby I carried yesterday that was two weeks old yesterday. She was abandoned on the same day that she was, she was born. We going there to help them was, I think it as a plus. I think it as a mark that as something that I would live to be very happy for with it. I felt touched. I felt um, we've not done enough and um, I like the commitment like Mr. T said and um, we we'll put in more effort and God willing we'll try our best. It touched me to see you know people abandoned you know people who need and don't have you know it touched me I mean and I'm glad I could you know put my quota you know to better in the country. But really no matter how well you prepare for it when you hear those stories of the children one on one, you know, it always takes you back. So, uh, I, I felt very, very, um, I put it like fortunate, you know, because uh, standing here, having my parents to raise me up to a level, you know, I lost my dad at some point and I know how it's like. Uh, it just tells you that there are so many things happening out there that most people do not really know about, you know, sometimes you have to go there and see for yourself to really know what it feels like. So on behalf of uh, the Eagle Motorcycle Club, our friends and our families, um, we're making this small donation for now and we hope that um, it, uh, it assists you 
somehow, you know, not only the kids, but the minders, yourself, making all these huge sacrifices for these children. I think it's more about us influencing each other. It's more about us being a blessing to the next person. It was another very strong bonding experience for us. And some members of the group, that was actually the first time they were riding this far. What I did was, because I had been to the orphanage just once to set up the trip, and I watched the expressions on the face of each member. You know, some people just held on to their helmets. They were, they were really touched. And I remember one of the guys, AD, he came up to me and whispered, I will never complain about anything in life again. We hope to have a longer relationship with you. Thank you. Thank you. Since El Sharut lived to ride, ride to live. I'd like to shout out to Zakia, my girlfriend. She doesn't want me to ride, but you know, I love you, babe. To the EMC guys that couldn't make it here today, you guys missed a big one. Next time, cancel all your plans for our next ride, okay? Shout out to Shaw Shaw Shook Shook, Ayak Bendo, uh, Miss You Love. Um, we're having twins soon. Um, I'm going to see you in a few days, just about five days. I really miss you. Hello to my son. It's about four, going to four months now. You know, hopefully one day he too will come on the two wheel. <laughs> I know my wife doesn't agree with that. Okay, I want to give a shout out to my siblings and my parents. They don't know I'm on this trip, they would have done everything possible. Even if it meant arresting me <laughs> to prevent me from coming from this, uh, for this for this trip. I uh, just want to give a shout out to everybody riding. You know, live to ride, ride to live, ride safe, don't be reckless. Man. Whatever man, just ride. To EMC, I want to make a big shout out to Mr. T especially. Two shout outs, one to the EMC crew, and that involves everybody who came with us, you know, the bad guys in the background, you know, my brother, Ayo, we work together in the office, Taye, with you, the crew, and secondly, to uh, Ant Hill Productions, the guys behind the camera. The reason why we're working with you guys is because you're so awesome, awesome not awesome, well, maybe you're awesome from today, but you guys are awesome, so to EMC, to EMC and to the Ant Hill crew, you guys are the best, and I love you guys too much. Everybody's going to be talking about Elon and I for like, days to come now. So I think the next big... <laughs> I hope I can say it to the president. The next big thing is Ghana. Lagos, Ghana. That's it. Take it or leave it. Lagos, Ghana. That's where we're all going. And they know it. We're going to Ghana, right? <laughs> Lagos, Ghana. So that's what we're going to do next. Because of certain peculiarities to the Nigerian environment, we don't encourage what quite a number of other motorcycle clubs do, like speeding at some, what I term ridiculous speeds on Nigerian roads because of the absence really of any emergency services on Nigerian roads. We will not endanger the lives of our riders. We won't go to places where we know there's unrest. We won't go to places where we know that the lives or the well-being of our members are in danger. We will not do that. As long as you're responsible, you want to make a difference in another person's life, and you ride a motorcycle and you enjoy doing that and you don't mind the responsible adventure part of what we're doing, you're welcome to the club. 